Okay, students, let's proceed. Now we are having question number four. It is saying that find the constants P and M such that uh, F can be continuous at one. So this is talking about continuity of uh, the vector value function. So look, this is a function you are having. F of T is defined to be like this. Basically, the function is uh, broken at one. It is, a, it is a piecewise function, so uh, for those values of t less than 1, the upper is used. And for those values greater than or equal to 1, the lower is used. So here, two variables are introduced, p and m. So uh, we are now asked to find these values so that your function, the vector value function, can be continuous at uh, t is equal to 1. So, in order to do this, what you need to do is you have to recall the definition of continuity for a function. A student's a vector function f of t is continuous at a number a if the limit of f of t as t approaching to a is the same as f of a. So, if the limit exists, and also if a is part of the domain of the function, and if the limit exists and is equal to a and equals to f of a, then the function is said to be continuous at a. So what we need to do is we need to assure this condition. So take a to be 1 because we are asked to determine continuity at 1. So now directly putting 1 there in our expression, we have this. Next from this, look, here I used approaching to 1 from the left because f at 1 is already defined here. f at 1 is already defined here, you see, in the second expression. So I have to consider, you see, my limit analysis on the upper part. Basically, the limit exists at 1 because, as you see, uh, we can directly take this one as it is. Uh, everything, if you observe everything here, you see our, our functions are defined, the scalar functions are defined on t, so our limit is uh, basically what? continuous there, I mean uh, defined there. So the limit of f of t as t approaching to 1 from the left is this expression. Since it, we are considering 1 from the left, we have to consider t values less than 1. So for that we need to consider the upper expression because the upper is defined for t values less than 1. So we are having this and this needs to be the same as f of 1. So clearly now the limit of this function is going to be like this. t is 1, so we can directly put 1 there in place of t, direct substitution capital. So when t is 1, what we are going to have is uh, 2i plus uh, 0j plus uh, 3pk uh, because when t is 1, you see everything turns to be 2i plus 0j plus 3pk and your f of 1 is going to be, you see the value when you see uh, 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 f is, when t is 1 uh, there in f. So for this case, you have to use the second one. You have to use the second uh, condition. So when t is 1, this is 1. So you are having 2i directly. When t is 1 again here, m minus 3 is going to come. Here also, when t is 1, look here, 6 divided by 1 is 6k. So now we are left with two equivalent what equivalent uh, vector expressions. So the x components are identical. So for these two to be the same, the y components must be the same. m minus 3 must match with 0. And the z component 3p must match with 6, and in doing so, we can obtain m minus 3, 0, and 3p, 6. So from this one, can easily determine that m is 3 and p is 2. So it, uh, when m is 3 and p is 2, the upper function, the function, the piecewise function f of t, can be continuous at, uh, you know, t equals 1. So in order to understand, you know, or discuss about continuity, what you need to do is you have to know the definition. For a vector function f of t to be continuous at a, the limit of f of t as t approaching a must be the same as f at a. That is what you need to assure. Up next is question number five, students. Question number five. And it's about find the derivative of the f at 1 if the vector function is as you see. So what we need to do is, students, we are expected to carry out derivative of the scalar functions with respect to what? t. So let's see how this can be obtained. So look, your f of t is this. It is directly taken from the given expression. Now we can multiply everything by t. So when we multiply everything by t, you are going to have 3t squared sine of negative 1 plus t cubed i plus t ln tj plus 2t is a power of t squared minus 1k. Now let's derivate. 
when we look for the derivative of this function, we have to derivate the scalars. So if this, if you observe the first, this x component, it's made of two what expressions. One is 3t squared, and the other is sine of minus 1 plus t cubed. So we need to undergo product rule. So the derivative of this one is 6t, and sine of t minus 1 plus t cubed is going to be taken, plus now 3t squared is taken now. We need to derivate the sine of minus 1 plus t cubed, and that's going to be cos of minus 1 plus t cubed times the inner should be derivative with respect to t, 3t squared can come. So next we have to derivate again t ln t, for this again you need to undergo product rule, the derivative of t is 1, 1 times ln t, as you see ln t can come. Next ln t derivative is 1 over t, so 1 over t times t goes to be 1, so we are having now this. Next coming to the z component, again we do have here two expressions, one is 2t and the other is e t squared minus 1, the derivative of 2t is 2, so 2 times e is a power of t squared minus 1 will be taken. And next 2t is directly taken and then we need to derivate e is a power of t squared minus 1, this is e is a power of t squared minus 1, then using chain rule we need to derivate the exponent and that's going to be 2t, so I wrote that here. Basically, student, now you can you know simplify if you want, but you don't need to do that because this is somehow very long. So you can directly substitute one because you are asked to find the derivative of f at one. So whenever when you substitute one in place of t, you are going to have this one because one cube is one, and here three is directly coming because one square is one. You are now putting one there, one minus one plus one. Again, put one there, three can come. Here, ln one is going to follow plus one. I'm now putting one there, the exponent goes to zero, so to e is a part of zero can come. And again, here, two times what, student? Two times. So here, what you need to do is the following one. So, students, now, uh, so you can put zero there because, as you see, it is here, so you can put zero and you can show that everything of this is going to be zero. So when you perform this, what's going to come is, is the following 9i plus j plus 2k students, 9i plus j plus 2k, because, you know, here it is zero, as you see, this one turns to be zero, so you are left with here zero, because zero is one, one times three is three, three, three times three is nine. Here this is zero, zero plus one is one j, and here, uh, this will be 1, 1 times 2 is 2, so 2 k is left. So the derivative of the given function at 1 is going to be a vector with component 9, 1, and 2. And what comes next is question number 6. Question number 6, you are asked to find the integral from minus 1 to 1 of k of t dt, where k of t is given by this. So this is all about integration of vector value function. So what you need to do is you have to undergo integration for each component from minus 1 to 1. So the solution proceeds in this way, uh, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of pi, uh, now look student, you can multiply uh, everything, the expression side here by t, so pi t squared can come, cosine of pi t q over 3i plus t ln t squared plus 3t squared, I just multiply the inner expression by t, nothing else. Now finding the integral is so simple. We have to do integral for each of these three, okay? Integral for the x component, the y component, and the z component. And the integral from minus 1 to 1 of this is going to come. Again, the integral from minus 1 to 1 of this. And integral minus 1 to 1 of the last component, you see? So what you need to do is remember for the first integral, you have to use substitution technique because it is so designed in such a way that substitution can be used. So let you take u to be pi t cubed over 3. So the derivative of that respect to t turns to be pi t squared t dt. So pi t squared is available here. So this turns to be, or the given expression now turns to be like this. We're having cos there. So pi t cubed over 3 is what students uh, du, I mean u. So the derivative of this one is pi t squared dt. So it is du basically. So have dt here, students. It's, it has been forgotten here. So integral from minus pi over 3 to pi over 3. Why minus pi over 3? Pi over 3 comes here because when you are using minus 1 in place of t here, look, we can directly put that here. Minus 1 cube is minus 1, minus 1 pi over 3 can come. That's why I use minus pi over 3. If you use again 1 here in place of t, pi over 3 can come. So everything of t is now written in terms of u.
So we knew that integral of cos u is sine u. So when you substitute pi over 3 and minus pi over 3 there, sine of pi over 3 minus sine of negative pi over 3, which actually is 2 times of sine of pi over 3 because sine function is, you see, an odd function. So this negative can be taken out and this turns to be positive. So sine pi over 3, positive sine pi over 3, which actually is 2 times sine pi over 3 can come. And we knew that sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So 2 cancels 2, root 3 can come. So what comes next is we have to integrate again this one, the second one, okay? The second should be uh, integrated. So again, for this, you need to use integration by substitution. So let you use u to be t squared. So the derivative of u respect to t will be 2t dt. So take uh, half of du. So half of du will be t dt. So try to substitute now. Look, uh, line of u squared can come and t dt is half of du. So now, look, students, when t is minus 1, look, when t is minus 1, u turns to be positive 1. And again, when t is 1, u turns to be positive 1. So evaluating this integral makes 0 because we need, we are expected to evaluate, okay, a certain expression for the same limit, for, for the same lower and upper limits integration. So this makes 0. This is 1. Again, this is 1. So the integration turns to be 0 without finding the antiderivative of this one students. Now what comes next is the last one, the last one which actually is this one students. So the integral from minus 1 to 1 of 3t squared dt and which actually is t cubed. So when you put 1 there it will be 1 and when you put minus 1 in t cubed it will be minus 1 so minus minus mix plus so you are having now 2 as a final output. Therefore students now you have obtained a different what scalar integral output so you just substitute that here. So the question uh, of if the integral was like this, as you see. So uh, the integration has gone to each of these three scalar uh, function. So as you see, everything is labeled here. So for the first one, we got radical 3. And for the y component, we got 0. And for the z component, we got 2. So the integral from minus 1 to 1 of your k of t, dt is going to be now radical 3i plus 2k.